Pastor Carl, do you have any sermons that argue against praetorism? Preterism. Yes, I do. So you might want to, let me define some terms. What is preterism? It's from a Latin term that simply means past. And so there are folks who take maybe uh, most notably someone like R.C. Sproul. Um, He took the book of Revelation, and apart from the seven churches in chapters 2 and 3, he saw chapters 4 through 18 as already being fulfilled. And so in my opening sermon on the book of Revelation, I go through a different approaches people have taken in interpreting Revelation. Some allegorize it. They say, well, this is not literal stuff. Well, maybe the second coming is, they'll say. But this is not literal. I mean, there's not actually going to be a 100-pound you know, ice bomb from heaven, is there? Yes, there is. Um, is God really going to, like, destroy the wildlife uh, with uh, in fish life across the planet? Yes, he is. Is God going to literally someday melt the planet with fire and create a new heavens and a new earth? Oh, yes, he is. But preterism, with the exception of the second coming, uh, takes the book of Revelation 4 through 18 as history. It's all historical. Avadi Bakum, another popular pastor, takes that view. He's just wrong. I like Vadi, um, but he's wrong. He's abused the scripture. He has taken a different approach to interpreting the prophetic portions of scripture than what you find modeled in scripture. I was just speaking to someone recently, and I said, well, in your realm of theology, there's just one big event. The Lord's going to sweep us off the earth and take us into heaven. He's got one big judgment. When at the great white throne judgment, the only people present are lost. Uh, and, you know, and they, they just have one big event and all these promises to the people of Israel. And, you know, it's all done. And so rooted in this is a form of anti-Semitism. If these people are not themselves anti-Semites, they've created a system of theology that feeds anti-Semitism. I wouldn't say that R.C. Sproul is an anti-Semite, or was. He's in heaven now. But he presented a system of truth that fed anti-Semitism, as did Martin Luther, as did John Calvin. And, of course, they said some wicked things wicked things that they had to give an account for when they met the Lord. I'm not saying they were lost, but they said some awful, wicked things. And so just because someone is a good preacher and maybe even a good theologian, you know, look, R.C. was an infant baptizer. People say, oh, that's a secondary issue. It's no big deal. It is a big deal. I don't want to get to heaven after 50 years of baptizing infants and I've never baptized one, but if that were my theological persuasion, and God to say, you know, Carl, it was like so plain. How could I have not made it clear? Believe and then be baptized. How could I have not made it clear? What prevents me from being baptized? You first have to believe, Acts 8. How could I have made it any clear? These Gentiles have received the Holy Spirit just like us. How can we refuse baptism? Regeneration, salvation, then baptism. That's the Great Commission, Carl. Make disciples. It doesn't say do discipleship. That's a misread of the text. Remember, the Great Commission is given in five times. He is saying make converts. That's the gist of it. It's not do discipleship. Now, the do discipleship side would be in teaching them all that I taught you to observe. Make converts, baptizing, teaching. That's the pattern all the way through the Acts. Carl, for 50 years, you left out a major portion of the Great Commission. In fact, you, through your infant baptizing, created a scenario that gave young people no opportunity to do some personal evaluation and to confess me publicly before men. So preterism. Preterism has put the church to sleep. And so I said to this brother, how were the prophecies in Zechariah for the first coming fulfilled? Look, uh, Jesus was uh, betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Just think of the prophecies in the last week. He comes into Jerusalem on a donkey. That's Zechariah. God prophesies that. He's betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. That's Zechariah. Judas did that. He is um, going to be struck as a shepherd, and the, the apostles will scatter. That's Zechariah. God predicts it. 
He'll be pierced through for our iniquities. John quotes the Jews seeing him pierced through that day as a fulfillment of Zechariah. How were those prophecies fulfilled literally? So when you get to the next chapter and he says his feet are going to um, land on the Mount of Olives, how's that going to be fulfilled? Literally. He's going to split it in two. You better believe it. All the nations of the world, Zechariah 12 and again in 14, are going to oppose Israel. Yes. So preterism is a false system of theology. It has put the church to sleep. Because listen, this is important. At the end of time, God promises to gather the Jews. And so you couldn't find Israel on a map for 18 centuries. Moses predicted their scattering and their regathering never happened during the time of the Old Testament. Jesus pinpoints the time when it is going to happen as he too projects their scattering that had never happened to the ends of the earth. Oh, they were scattered once to Syria and then some time later to Babylon, but never to all the nations of the world. So what Moses wrote never happened. Jesus tells us when it's going to happen. It's going to happen beginning with the destruction of Jerusalem, and it did. But then he goes on in the next chapter, and he assumes they're back in the land. What do they do with Matthew 24 and 25? They preterize it. Matthew 24, especially, it's all in the past. That's not going to happen in the future. And so these earthquakes and the abomination of desolation, certainly there's an Old Testament type of that. But what Jesus is describing is unparalleled in human history. He said that these judgments will be so severe that unless God had cut the time short, no flesh would have survived. R.C. Sproul was wrong in the way he interpreted this chapter of Scripture. He helped put the church to sleep apart from some other error that he propagated. He helped to put the church to sleep. So Israel's back in the land. The nations of the world, and certainly this has been accelerated since October 7th, are going against the Jewish people. This is prophesied. We're living in the final chapter of human history. How many years do we have left? I don't know. It doesn't change what I do. I said last week on Stan in the Gap Radio, a program I'm on once a month, sometimes twice, um, to, that, that, that deals with Israel and prophecy. And I said, suppose for the sake of argument, I knew 30 years to the day we had until Jesus came. Would I quit my job today? Of course not. Would I stop this, this expression of payment or this expression? Of, of course not. I'd keep occupying until he came. So we don't quit our jobs like some of the Thessalonians did. We occupy until Jesus comes. You live like he might not come for a thousand years. You live like he might come tomorrow. But we do know we're in the final time frame of human history. And when you add up the days of Noah, the days of Lot, growing apostasy, the hatred of Jerusalem, look, God knows it's near, and we need to be alert. And the preterist view is putting the church to sleep. So this brother from Tennessee— Listen to my first message in the Revelation series. I have 70-plus hours of preaching on the book of Revelation. By the way, if you don't have the Search the Scriptures app, download it. Just go to the App Store. It's kind of like a blue triangle. Uh, Download it. And also, if you don't follow us on YouTube, uh, even today, even before the hour is over, go to YouTube, type in Search the Scriptures, subscribe you'll get a lot of really helpful shorts and some additions that are coming. You can also follow me at Carl Brigu or search the scriptures on X, and you'll get some personal stuff you won't find anywhere else. That will help us. Again, my, my goal is to get God's word out there, to, to counter some of this error like preterism that this brother from Tennessee has called in about. Dr. Carl Brogy answers your questions about the Bible and living the Christian life Tuesday mornings at 11 on The Light, 88.7 FM, and online around the world at wagp.net.